Hey guys, I'm sitting here with Jeffrey, my ex-partner, who is still technically somewhat a partner, but we've been living in separate spaces since New Year's and we felt called to sit down and share a little bit of the lessons we've had over the last three months of separating a long-term relationship and living in our own spaces. And so we wanted to take an opportunity to have a conversation about how this process has been for us and hopefully there will be some juicy nuggets in there for you as well. I don't like that word juicy nugget. <laughs> so, <laughs> as soon as I said juicy, I was like, oh. You know, just coming from my, my experience, I had only ever known living with somebody else. I had only ever known sharing a space with somebody because I moved out of my parents when I was 17. I moved directly into a house with Derek. And so thinking back on it now, I feel like I never actually got that uh, initiation into adulthood. and that alone time that I think every adult needs um, to learn about who they are and to, to form and anchor uh, identity. I think this experience of being on my own has really showed me how important it is for me to have my own space to rest and to dream and to recharge and without anyone there. And that includes my partner. And that's just because in my, my blueprint, I do need a lot of alone time and I think that's the case for some people, it might not be the case for other people, but I, it took me a long time to realize that. And it took me a long time to let go of the judgment that um, having my own space was, was selfish and that I couldn't actually have uh, a relationship with Derek while having my own space. We had already been talking about feeling like this is something we needed. So once we made that decision and you finally got your space and had moved out, there was like an excitement around learning to live with ourselves and become whole in ourselves. So obviously there were some emotional times that I had to navigate and I know you did as well, but there was excitement that was kind of driving the experience forward, which kind of catapulted me into this solo way of living. And as much as I love spending my time with you, um, I love that, but I also love coming home to my own space. And I've really grown accustomed to waking up in my own bed, sleeping in my own bed, all those things. And although you never put a pressure on me to feel like I needed to be doing something or to be performing. I always felt the need to perform. There's a fear inside of me of giving up my own space again. I'm like, how, how would we navigate our relationship from all the lessons we've learned thus far, which is that we both really value our own space. I think just being in my own space and being able to come to you when I'm ready and communicate and have a relationship when that feels right, that has allowed me to have a deeper love for you because I'm giving the love that I need to myself, which has been space. Yeah, I think the piece that I took from what you just said is there seems to be boundaries in place now that allow us to um, recharge and feel safe in the way that maybe we couldn't before because I think because our lives were so entangled and enmeshed, there was a lack of boundaries. In our case, I think it came to a point where we had been through these patterns of of conflict and we had lost this this sense of identity in, in ourselves individually and it had been 13 years and we'd never really taken official space in the way that I think our souls were calling us to take and so this ultimately was the best decision for us. Mm -hmm. For me it wasn't even so much conflict, I feel like we didn't have that much conflict in our relationship, it was the attachment. It was difficult sharing a business, sharing mutual friends, being so intertwined into each other's families. It was never really clear when one of us should stay home, when one of us shouldn't come on a family trip, but I don't think it's healthy for a relationship to get to a point where you're doing everything together and I think that we were and that was in my mind a major demise of our relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I think through that attachment, what happened, what began to happen for me was I, it became unclear what thoughts and emotions were actually mine and what, what thoughts and emotions were his and maybe what thoughts and emotions were coming from other areas of her life. And so going through, I went through a pretty challenging time over the past couple of years and being in the midst of that, you know, dark night of the soul for so long. And then also being in this really small space with my partner and losing this sense of identity, I just became lost. I, that was the best feeling to this. That's the best feeling to describe it is the feeling of being lost. And I knew that I could find my way back to myself, but 
in the container that we created, I knew that, that wasn't possible and that I had to make a decision to let go of somebody that was super important to me and also the, the life that we created together, I had to walk away from. But I knew what was more important was this, this journey that I had with myself and this uh, initiation is the way that I like mm. to describe it, like an initiation into um, adulthood or initiation into finding my identity as a separate individual. Mm -hmm. We were under a lot of pressure in the last year of our relationship. We moved into a tiny house, we sold our business, both of our workloads was decreased by, I would say, roughly 80%. Um, so there, there was a lot of pressures and like you said, you were navigating some mental health issues such as depression and, and heavy metal toxicity. So I wish I would have been able to support you more in the way that you were looking for, but clearly I wasn't because I wasn't giving to myself in the way that I needed. I didn't actually trust that we could come together and communicate effectively and actually move past some of these core issues that had just kept presenting themselves over, over the years. And so it wasn't until I learned the frameworks of nonviolent communication and also the works of uh, Harville Hendricks and Katie or Helen Hunt in Getting Love You Want. It's not Helen Hunt, is it? Yeah, it is Helen Hunt. Oh, what? <laughs> no, Helen Hunt. Oh, it is <laughs> Helen, Helen Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I did a good laugh there. Their framework, um, the Imago dialogue, that I was able to bring these frameworks and tools into our communication. And then we started to actually work on some of these core wounds that existed in not only our relationship, but wounds that we've carried from childhood. And so since doing that, I felt we've created really a safe and really clear communication container. And through that, we've been able to have deeper levels of connection and empathy for one another as well, because we're witnessing why it is we show up the way we do in relationships and why it is we, we deal with conflict in the way we do in relationships. And so having a deeper empathetic understanding has really been a powerful tool in shifting some of these old emotions of resentment, anger, and mistrust. Mm -hmm. We're actually in a stronger place and we're communicating our needs much more effectively. And I would say our love and as you said, our empathy is much stronger than it was before. I would say the, the way that our relationship has shifted is there's a lot less pressure and there's now a safety in knowing that we have a framework of communication that's effective and that can really help us get to the core of what we're really trying to communicate. Because I think often in relationships and especially in conflict in relationships, the, the underbelly of what we're saying often gets missed mm -hmm. and there's just a lot of projection and blame and victimization that takes place that really doesn't get either person anywhere. Mm -hmm. To be clear, the triggers don't go away. The triggers are still present. It's just how do we navigate these triggers with more awareness and with putting these tools into practice? Yes, that's one thing that became really clear in this separation is time and space actually doesn't do healing. It may diffuse emotions, but once the two parties come back together, it's the exact same patterns, it's the exact same wounds that show up. You took the words right out of my mouth. So that's why it's important. We have to, it's important if, if, if you want a thriving relationship, in my opinion, we have to learn new ways of communicating and we have to put the work in. Mm -hmm. I actually have the book here. I'm going to show you because I think everyone needs to have this book, Getting the Love You Want. So if you could give yourself one piece of advice while we were still together, what do you think that would have been? Well, I think... First of all, I think everything that played out was perfect and that I see so much growth and teachings already from our decision to separate. Um, but I think my advice to myself and anybody in, in relationship is to learn the tools that can help you. Um, because oftentimes we're not taught these tools in school or by our parents. And so we're entering these relationships with... Definitely not by our parents. <laughs> Let's just make that clear. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, mom. We're entering these relationships with a lack of understanding of how to actually express it is what we need and ultimately we expect our partners to know what it is we need and we expect them to know 
the clear emotions that we're feeling at all times. And, and so I think seeking the tools to learn how to communicate non-violently and to also uh, put in some work to changing the way that we communicate. Then it's one step closer to a relationship that has empathy and connection and ultimately healing because I think that is what relationships are really here to offer us is the opportunity to heal through these childhood wounds. This book, it's worth reading. Um, and coming out on the other side of that healing into a conscious partnership and true love, which I think we all are seeking and we all deserve. So what piece of advice would you give yourself? What piece of advice would I give myself? I would say just to follow my own advice, which is always to honor your own boundaries and your own self-love practice first and foremost. And even though I was always worried about hurting you or that you wouldn't feel included, just trusting that whatever that decision I made was meant to happen and was of the highest good for both of us. And ultimately it always is. You were always more attractive to me when I made decisions for myself. And if you had a hard night and you went into loneliness or pain, that's what you needed to face in that moment. And there was healing in that. So I think just not avoiding painful moments out of a desire for things to be easy is um, the advice I would definitely have given to myself and probably the main lesson that I've learned since we separated. In reality, Derek and I are at the very beginning of this journey of doing these practices and really sorting through these wounds that we've carried from childhood. And I think that's the first step is to begin to cultivate, continue to cultivate that container of safety. And in that container, begin to apply these practices from the various protocols such as the Imago Dialogue or the NBC, Authentic Relating is another one that's really great. Um, there's, there's so many. Ultimately, what I hope is that we can move forward as a strong conscious partnership and experience the fruits of love in ways that we hadn't, haven't been able to experience thus far. I know we love each other very dearly, but there's still stuff that gets in the way. And so I see so much potential for us and for anyone else out there too. I think that anyone has the ability to have a strong, powerful, uh, healing relationship and it just takes a little bit of work. So I, I think that's what we're focusing on right now. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Why am I kissing your hand right now? <laughs> oh, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate you taking the time to follow us on our journey and all of the love and support from some of you guys that have been rooting us on for years. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed and I feel like it's really contributed to our overall success in life. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you everybody. And thanks for listening to this conversation and being open to hearing about the inner workings of this new container that we're creating together. And there's more conversations to come, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm.